Ser dona da minha empresa me ensinou que por trás de toda grande mulher existem outras mulheres que ajudaram ela a chegar lá. Foi o suor da minha mãe que pagou meus estudos. E foi só com o apoio da minha irmã que eu consegui cuidar do meu negócio e dos meus filhos ao mesmo tempo. Já cresci, já caí, já reinventei meu negócio, mas nunca fiz nada sozinha. Por isso a gente tem uma regra. Quando uma mulher sobe, ela puxa as outras para cima. Sebrae, a força da empreendedora brasileira. And the, and the Brazil, to be very good, a very good, Okay, uh, uh, I, I'd like to, in the beginning, uh, give, having a first round for you to introduce yourself and the, your perspective on the subject of orchestration of innovation ecosystems. And uh, Piquet, do you want to start? Yes, thank you. Just a brief introduction of myself or just a presentation as you want. The presentation. Yes. Do you have the, do you have slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will I will share some slides. Just thinking about what means orchestration and for that, if you allow me, I will talk. Yeah, yeah, please, please do the, do that. Do okay. yeah. Perfect. Really, uh, thank you for this opportunity because with that we have the opportunity to share what we are doing here at La Salle, but also at ISP, the International Association of Science Park, and also the Triple Helix. At the end of the day, all of these uh, institutions are working in order to promote the interaction between agents, but agents for what? And that's perhaps my first message is that when we talk about ecosystems of innovation, we need to manage talent, technology, and capital for, but for what? For transforming opportunities in value, but providing the best ecosystem for that. For this reason, we need to be sure that university government and industry are working together in order to achieve common purpose. And that's perhaps the first thing that I would like to share with the audience. Innovation means that we have challenges. If you want to have challenge, we will we don't need innovation. But challenges arriving arriving when we have purpose. Purpose from our point where we are now and what we want to achieve. And that's the reason why we need to be sure that all the agents of a cluster are working together, uh, promoting that they are achieving the same purpose. For that, uh, we have different configuration of clusters, but uh, the Porterian clusters, but what one of the models I like a lot is the cluster of innovation from Jerry Engel that is promoting that the new disruptive innovation is coming from entrepreneurs and corporates and, 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 and mature companies are absorbing innovation from the, this kind of entrepreneurs and venture capitals are bridging from these new ideas to the uh, these corporations that will buy innovation, buying this kind of ideas from startups. For all of that, uh, the important thing is that we are developing ecosystems of innovation when we are orchestrating the different activities and different agents that we have in the same ecosystem. And for that, we need not only a good place for working, as Tapan Monroe says, also a good place for living, uh, providing quality of life for talent at the, day, the raw material of, of this new knowledge-based economy. And this is because we are not just in Brazil or Barcelona, we are in the world, or in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, uh, or in any place of the world, and we have to take advantage of any science and technology of the world in order to provide global impact. Starting with the first square at my uh, right is about the local market at the, as a sophisticated demand as a place, and, and I am learning how to apply innovation in order to scale uh, globally. And that's perhaps the challenge. How can we combine these three elements uh, with the work of the university government and industry? Uh, this is a model, a complex model. We can talk about in the urban transformation, the hard factors, the soft factors, the company and the talent. But the more important thing is the governance of what we are doing in any ecosystem. With that, we were developing with uh, Georgia Audi and Clarissa Stephanie from U U University of Federal de Santa Catarina and Georgia Audi from Tecnopuc, a model that now we're working uh, also with Karina Rapetti, the model of Pact of Innovation. And the, the basic idea of in this orchestration is that we need to know who we are and what, who is doing what and who is doing who. And, you know, the asset and activities means uh, knowing very well who is doing what, but 
also uh, combining all our capabilities in order to understand what is the common vision and from this vision understanding challenges and actions. This is something that we were doing in Barcelona when we were the European capital of innovation, promoting that people, private, public and place were working together for the achievement of a challenge. In that moment, the challenge was that we had a big crisis in the year 2010, 2012, and the goal, the goal that we had is to go exit of this crisis. And, and with this crisis, we understood that we had to work in internationalization, in funding, in the role of the local authority or the role of the talent. This, uh, it was the agenda of challenges. And with that, we were promoting projects, projects as a key deliveries for any challenge that we wanted to transform, like uh, the one-stop shop or the Barcelona Economic Showroom or the Cybernarium of Talent. But we were doing all the thing was, okay, if we want to achieve something, we have to evaluate how we are delivering and if we are advancing or not. It means it's not only important uh, the mapping the uh, our starting point is not only important what is the vision also what is the what are the challenges and what projects but also how we evaluate them in order to be sure that we have a public evaluation of the projects that we're advancing it was also the case of medellin when when they were developing the pack of innovation el grande pacto uh, uh, of, of innovation of medellin that they wanted to promote innovation as a, as a exit, as a solution for the challenge that they had, economic and social challenges. Nowadays, Medellin is considered one of the top leaders in innovation as a city. And the good thing is that they were delivering projects and projects with high participation of the members. But also the case of Santa Catarina, when, when they were promoting the pack of innovation uh, in the year 2017, uh, I was helping the state in order to orchestrate the different agents, not only physically in Florianopolis, they were developing uh, a strategy of centers of innovation around all the, all the state, and they were managing, not only in, an, in a state base, also in a local base, packs of innovation. Important thing, because it means that innovation, ecosystem of innovation is not just in the national level or regional or state level, it could be in a local level and the, and the work and the, and the, the the role of the innovation centers as SMP centers of innovation are really very important. Or the case of Porto Alegre, when we see how uh, Porto Alegre was understanding that the only way to go out of the crisis in that moment, uh, it was in terms of reputation, in terms of uh, security, in terms of uh, self uh, self confidence. Uh, it means uh, when I arrived there, I remember that they were. Uh, good individuals, but not good as a team. And that's the important thing, the role of the University Alliance, where the three universities, uh, PUC, uh, Unicinos, and the Federal University, sign an agreement to work together for what? For the call of Pacto Alegre and to, to make an agreement with universities together with companies and the local government. Important because in that case, the government was uh, following the universities working together and uh, for this pack of innovation. It was wonderful how they agree about the manifesto. Manifesto means an agreement, what they wanted to do together, because the pack is what we want to do together. If we don't want to add, it's better not to do any pack. It's, and the, the together was the way for advancing in the starting point but also understanding the challenges that they had in that moment, talent, transformation of the, of the human transformation in Cuarto Distrito or other elements like the image of the city. And they were delivering projects and projects with these challenges. Projects like uh, Instituto Caldera is a center of innovation or uh, other projects that they were delivering and they were evaluating. And evaluation is not bad, it's not bad to highlight the red, because red means that we have to improve not only who is leading the project, all the ecosystems because, the, because we want to help them to advance together. And let me finalize with the Goya's case. Uh, this is a project that uh, we are leading now with uh, Karina Rapetti and, and other 
people in Goyas, just understanding that we were uh, developing different workshops and triple helix meetings. We were uh, co-creating the vision, we were making a call, and we were making a signature, mm -hmm. and now we are deploying the projects. Important thing, projects is the element that we have for delivering and for transforming our realities to achieve the vision. Lessons is about that we need a long-term vision. We need a clear leadership. Leadership means uh, that we need to be sure that somebody is leaping or not for this project, usually the mayor, the governor, but also the rector of a university or uh, the president of an association of companies. But also we need to be sure that we have a commitment of agents for involving citizens, but also for working in projects, evaluating the advance and also uh, to develop this continuous process of transformation. Uh, with that, I finish my contribution and I give the word and back to, to that. Okay, good. Thank, thank you very much, PK. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, let, we are going to listen to Karine and then Chico and then we open for questions. Just as a short comment, uh, I understood there this okay, orchestration of innovation ecosystems and their perspective demands a pact, a pact of the agents or stakeholders involved and demands a clear strategy as well. There's the, the, it starts with a, a vision, a mission, and then with the strategic initiatives that will put all these initiatives, all these agents together and have a real impact in the, in the, in the world. Yeah? Impact in the real world. Thank you. Very good. Very interesting. Karina, it's the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I am also going to share some slides just to make the my talk more entertaining. Uh, here. <clears throat> well, uh, following with the idea that Josep uh, already mentioned. Uh, to establish to orchestrate ecosystem of innovation, first step is uh, to imagine the future we want to we want to be. Is is that defining the vision, and then we have uh, with the Asian, it means government, academy, industry, and civil society, um, establish or gather what are their needs. And with this gap, the current situation and the desired situation, we are going to establish this project that Josep mentioned before, to move us, move us from this uh, actual situation from the desired one. And sometimes when we start to define uh, these needs, for sure we, we have to ask to the Asian that are in the territory, yes, this is the first step. But also, since we are talking about innovation and the future, we, we have to be sure that we are covering all the aspects or the characteristics that are necessary to really evolve. And because of that, maybe it is interesting to go a, a bit deeper in the main dimensions that compound uh, this kind of uh, ecosystem of innovation. And uh, this will be my uh, contribution to this uh, talk. Uh, also based on a book that uh, the, the book that Joseph mentioned before, written by Giorgio D, Clarissa Stefani, and Joseph uh, himself, uh, we were able to establish ten dimensions that compound innovation ecosystem, and uh, these uh, ten dimensions we grouped them in three main categories. The first category uh, is also linked with the first slide that, that Joseph. Three elements are the core element of every ecosystem of innovation and they are required in every ecosystem that we uh, want to develop or create. Uh, these are innovation, investment and talent. Uh, innovation and technology uh, include uh, the protection, the incubation of the companies, how to uh, go with them and help them to develop uh, this the startup and all the new venture that are required to evolve the ecosystem. Also, uh, this uh, dimension is linked with the transfer of technology and for sure the open innovation, the connection with other ecosystems is key uh, to the exit of these areas. Then uh, regarding investment, uh, for sure we need 
someone that trusts in this project and make them grow. And this uh, dimension is uh, linked with the credit, the investment guarantees, merge and acquisition and investment marketplace. And last but not least, uh, some One of the key elements of the ecosystem of innovation is the talent. And for this talent, uh, we have to be able to create a, a spaces of training orientation. We are working with cutting edge technologies and people need uh, to be trained uh, to be able to be part of the change. Sometimes uh, people is not that don't want to change, is that don't know how. So training is a, a key factor to help and to involve and to achieve engagement of all the stakeholders and the uh, agents of the ecosystems. And for sure, uh, in some cases, uh, to attract and to make the people that uh, already uh, was born in our territory, to make them to return, mapping them around the world and creating, developing uh, the, characteristics, the characteristics in our territory to make them to come back. These are the, the first category, basic element, and these three um, dimensions. Then the next category, we call it the specialization uh, category, and is composed by other three elements, society, territory and space, and sectors and specialization. Here, uh, let's say, are the vocational elements. The first three are key all the innovation ecosystem must to have it or should have it. This uh, next uh, field of uh, dimensions are more linked with the territory and the specific characteristic of the territory that also modify uh, the elements that compound the innovation ecosystem. Uh, for instance, the territory and space uh, dimension include for sure the infrastructure and the possibility to make in our in your territory a living lab a, a way a space to try and to test all the development and project that you are uh, working on in your uh, ecosystem also is uh, also linked with the marketplace of spaces and the to map all the uh, characteristics and future that are available to develop your territory when we talk about the society dimension, we are here including something that is linked also with talent, but with a wider view. It includes uh, how to link or connect with new generation, how to uh, make uh, or achieve engagement of all the family and people of uh, third age in our ecosystem, because they are also part of uh, our project. We, we have uh, to be sure that our project, our ecosystem uh, is success or achieve success. Uh, it's important to be able to engage all the elements and all the people that live in our territory. Uh, and finally, the third element of this second category is sectors and specialization. And this um, dimension is focused on for sure clusters maybe a uh, territory uh, could uh, specify or put all the strengths in one specific cluster because, for instance, for uh, their uh, natural resources that they are already strong and maybe they can improve in these particular sectors. And also as a strategic stance or uh, point of view, they uh, could decide to start to develop other cluster that will help or complement the cluster that they already have. Also in this uh, ther third um, dimension of sector and specialization is connected with for sure project, a specific project with specific sectors and uh, how to link a project in different sectors that are required to advance first in one uh, sector and this will allow to advance in another. And the last uh, layer, the last category is the category of connection. And here we include the last four elements out of the 10 dimensions <coughs> that compose uh, this meta model. It includes connection, include information, uh, 
how we are going to receive, even when the ecosystem of innovation have different Asian and the project can be developed by any of them, it's important to have at least one entrance door, one stop shop, it, the reference for every people that want to be part or coming from outside of uh, also living in the, ter in, the, in the territory, have information, clear information and at least uh, guidelines to go to look for other information that maybe is not in this uh, moment uh, with the people there. So information is key in this uh, kind of ecosystem, communication to have a common uh, agenda and for sure to increase, to boost and to promote the networking. Then the networks, local and international. Uh, in the first step of an ecosystem of innovation, for sure, it's really, really important the, to uh, achieve share uh, services, share processes, share calendars inside the ecosystem. But when the ecosystem evolve and achieve more maturity, it's, uh, let's say, one of the key factors, as I've also mentioned before, is the connection with other ecosystem with old world, this could be the international network in which uh, in this proposal uh, we include academic network, business network, institutional networks and program networks. And last but not least, uh, the international uh, dimension in this last category, uh, which include investment attraction, international positioning uh, and an internationalization plan. So. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a vision, we have a current situation, we have to define the project, but uh, a guideline to be sure that we are uh, including all the, the characteristics and the factor that must be to take into consideration, uh, this is a good uh, starting point. For sure, in reality, we can uh, hear the, the needs of the territory and we can complete this uh, proposal with other a project and dimension, dimension, yes, for sure. But let's say that this could be a really, really good starting point to start to connect all the requirements and the needs of the territory. And this is this could be the, the complete uh, meta model for the uh, innovation ecosystem that is the epicenter, of, for sure, of the uh, ecosystem of innovation. And here, I... Thank you very much, Karina. Uh, very interesting contribution, the meta model, which implies in several levels of uh, uh, several levels of uh, uh, innovation ecosystems that you have to pay attention in order to have the to achieve the objectives through the orchestration of these different levels. Huh? Very yes. interesting. And the professor Francisco Sabay in our first rounds. Hi, Mosi. Good morning, hey, everyone. Of again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Good morning for everyone. Uh, first question. Uh, I think as we are in Brazil, uh, the first chanting I'm doing in this conference is speaking in Portuguese because uh, the whole of our audience is in Portuguese in Brazil, you know. Uh, at the same time, our uh, special guests PK and Karina uh, understands Portuguese as well, so I think it's much better if you if we speak in Portuguese to get more fluence and and interact with our audience. That's fine for you. Uh, bem, uh, a questão, em primeiro lugar, vamos se parabéns pela 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 iniciativa. Eu acho que esses esforços de sempre congregar é, de forma repetida o de forma frequente os os atores que configuram um ecossistema de inovação será sempre uma coisa bem-vinda porque nós temos um déficit nesse Brasil falando aqui especificamente no Brasil e obviamente outros lugares do mundo que a gente também acompanha é, são lugares que têm uh, dificuldades em colocar em conexão esses componentes que a gente uh, chama da tríplice hélice. Isso é uma questão uh, muito importante e 
para nós, quanto mais houver essa discussão, melhor. O, 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 o título do nosso evento se chama Orquestração de Ecossistemas de Inovação. É, sobre ecossistemas de inovação, podemos falar um pouco nessa introdução, mas eu gostaria principalmente de responder a perguntas, é, mais do que falar de uma forma tão estruturada quanto Piquet e Karina já o fizeram. De qualquer forma, é, o entendimento que nós trabalhamos na Amprotec, fundamentalmente sobre ecossistemas de inovação, é que são espaços de formulação e implementação de estratégias de desenvolvimento local, regional ou nacional de longo prazo. Estratégias estas baseadas em inovação. Então, não é uma tarefa trivial, porque, via de regra, as estratégias de desenvolvimento estão presas a questões relacionadas ao passado. É, não é comum você ver estratégias que, que têm o compromisso com o futuro, como tem a inovação. Esse é um primeiro desafio. E os papéis principais de um ecossistema de inovação são, fundamentalmente, como já mencionava a Karina, a questão do talento, a atração e retenção de talentos, porque somente quem cria são pessoas, quem inova são pessoas, então isso é fundamental, ter uma estratégia que contemple o máximo de atributos do lugar, do território, para que você possa atrair e reter a maior quantidade possível de talentos, esse é um ponto fundamental. Um outro componente que é crítico, Moacir, nesse esforço de estruturação de um ecossistema, se chama a criação de condições para a circulação do conhecimento. Os talentos criam conhecimento, mas o conhecimento tem que circular, o conhecimento tem que, tem que rodar, o conhecimento tem que ser compartilhado. Esse papel é, um, é fundamental e os ecossistemas, se não forem estruturados, eles não permitirão, a menos que a gente acredite que simplesmente as informações estando disponíveis na internet já é suficiente. As centelhas, as fagulhas da criação, é, o, o, o modo de fazer a criação é algo que implica numa interação contínua de forma híbrida, presencial, de forma remota, de forma mais remota, mais presencial, são escolhas. Mas há que se cuidar em ambientes de inovação, em ecossistemas de inovação, da promoção contínua e intensa do fluxo de conhecimentos. Essa é, um, é uma questão fundamental. Um terceiro ponto nessa breve introdução diz respeito, Moacir, à, à atração, é, à criação de condições para a atração de empreendedores, de empreendimentos e de financiadores. Uma das questões que a gente é, sempre fala quando se refere a ecossistemas maduros é que eles se tornam, quanto mais maduros forem, eles se tornam mais atrativos ao capital investidor de risco. Se a gente puder é, dizer que existe uma métrica ou algumas das métricas de maturidade de um ecossistema, é quando ele deixa de ser interessante apenas para as comunidades locais, de empreendedores, de trabalhadores, da universidade local, do governo local, e passa a ser atrativo ao capital investidor de risco, que enxerga valor nesse ecossistema para poder é, aportar o capital, que funciona como um combustível para você escalar os negócios. Esses são três ingredientes que a gente dá sempre muita atenção na arquitetura de um, de um ecossistema é, de inovação. Por último, nessa apresentação, eu queria mencionar é, a palavra orquestração. Orquestração tem múltiplos significados, mas é claro que a gente é, puxa mais para o lado da música, no meu caso, porque eu sou um amante da música, mas olha, Moacir, quando a gente fala de orquestração, me vem de imediato a, a palavra jazz. Inovação é jazz. A de, gerenciar um ambiente de inovação requer habilidades que a gente encontra muito mais na forma flexível, na forma criativa, 
nos talentos livres e leves, numa criação coletiva que a gente encontra nas bandas de jazz do que nas orquestras, nas orquestras cujos músicos tocam por pauta e que tem um regente que costuma, via de regra, ser um ente bastante autoritário, que comanda o ritmo de tudo e a cada membro da orquestra ele tem um modo específico de como ele deve fazer. Eu gosto muito dessa analogia, porque tendo passado 11 anos assim, à frente do Porto Digital, que é um desses ambientes de inovação que a gente tem aqui no Brasil, é, com, com um destaque grande, e depois, na sequência, quatro anos à frente do Sebrae Pernambuco, onde implementamos uma plataforma de inovação é, bastante robusta, eu não tenho dúvida de que, pelo menos seis características, enquanto eu falava aqui, eu estava tomando nota, são, são fundamentais para você orquestrar um ecossistema de inovação. A primeira delas é exatamente o lado da criação, da criação coletiva, ou da cocriação, e Karina também mencionava sobre, sobre isso. O jazz é um esforço permanente de cocriação. Você não lê pautas, você sabe o que quer, você sabe que música vai tocar, é, mas você tem um propósito, seja de entretenimento, seja qualquer outro, mas você dá muita flexibilidade. E a flexibilidade é uma outra característica, assim como as trocas de visões. No, na orquestração de um ecossistema, assim, a troca de ideias permanente entre todos os agentes é que vale numa orquestra de jazz a troca dos olhares. Numa banda de jazz, os olhares entre os membros carregam conteúdo tremendo de informação, de informação subliminar, de informação não dita, mas tem uma carga concentrada de conteúdos ali velados que cabe ao talento e à criatividade do músico é, desdobrar. E nunca dá errado. Eu nunca vi uma banda de jazz dar errada, nem as am bandas amadoras de jazz, nem as grandes bandas de jazz. Então, é importante a gente lidar com essa, com essa componente da flexibilidade, da interação, das trocas. É, a questão do talento já mencionada, Piquet tem isso como, como uma questão muito forte. É, e para nós também, talento por uma questão bastante óbvia. Quem cria, quem inova é gente. Talento é um atributo de pessoas. Então, as pessoas é que tem que estar no centro de qualquer estratégia de orquestração de um, de, um, de, um, de um ecossistema de inovação. Moacir, e por último, eu queria destacar um ponto é, que, que, que é fundamental, que é o espírito da colaboração, que chama uma outra característica, que se chama confiança. A colaboração, Moacir, é fundamental e sem ela nós não vamos romper a nossa visão fordista, taylorista, de departamentalização das coisas. Nós temos que horizontalizar as estruturas, nós temos que pôr em contato todas as pessoas em plano de igualdade para que elas possam cooperar mais livremente e da cooperação, assim, você extrair sinergias, extrair vínculos de, de, de relacionamento, de confiança que façam com que eu, acreditando que você vai performar, não fique tenso e não fique imobilizado na minha própria pauta. Então, o esforço colaborativo é fundamental na orquestração, assim como numa banda de jazz a colaboração tem que se dar é, junto com a confiança nos parceiros. Quando a gente fala de triple helix, a gente tem que falar deste componente. Só se fica de pé um, uma arquitetura baseada na tríplice hélice, se houver realmente confiança entre os atores para que possam conviver, conviver, conviver na divergência, mas, sobretudo, avançar na colaboração, na cooperação. Deixo essas palavras aqui de entrada para essa primeira apresentação. Em uma segunda rodada, eu destacaria, Moacir, como a gente até tinha conversado um pouquinho antes, destacaria a importância é, de a gente sinalizar pontualmente alguns pontos críticos para o êxito de, uma, é, de um ecossistema de inovação. Ok, Chico, thank you very much, very interesting. 
you're talking about the talent that is, is necessary in these innovation ecosystems. You're talking about the knowledge sharing. I like to to use the term match. Né? I think that we, are, we, we need to provoke the match among the players. Né? They have to meet each other. And you are saying also the uh, the collaboration, the confidence is, is critical in order to to the innovation ecosystem to succeed. Né? And also the, you made a provocation to the very name of the very title of the panel. There is not the orchestration. Innovation is, is jazz. It's much less prepared or and organized. And it's much, it's much more an emerging uh, movement that put all these people together and out. I have doubts about that. Uh, we are going to have very interesting, you have over 50 panels in the conference, over 200 panelists. One of them is a guy from Embraer X. And Embraer X uh, is the disruptive business unit of Embraer. They do a very uh, or structured uh, orchestration of uh, innovation. Uh, and they say that they, they plan that in a very structured way. And it's, mu it's much more like an orchestra than a jazz, according to I learned with him. But I will pay attention in the presentation he's going to make in the conference again. I, we met in the in a conference in, in New I York. Think that, uh, I, I think there's a, a little bit a little bit difference. Uh the perspective of a company uh it took uh by uh, itself and the ecosystem as an environment. For me, there's two different approaches. Uh, if you are leading with a company, okay, I think it's, uh, it's better to, to define and, and develop a very well structured strategy to achieve the goals. It's very different of the perspective of the the uh, ecosystem as a, a a whole and of um, an, an environment full of different perspectives, different agents. I think uh, a company, uh, okay, it should be running by uh, an, a kind of orchestration, uh, traditional orchestration mood, but for uh, ecosystems, uh, like we are talking about, I think the mood, jazz mood is better to, to, to achieve our goals, but okay. it's a good, it's a good discussion. Good, good discussion. Good uh, if, if I may, if I may yes, in this please. direction, uh, when we talk about director of jazz, every, any band of jazz has a director. The first responsibility of the director is first what music do you want to involve? If you don't have a double bass, or you have a singer, or you will add a guitar, a Spanish guitar, or I don't know, whatever you need. <coughs> it means the concept of director. In this case, as I agree, Chico, that it's not that he's going to write you every single note that you have to, to play. It's about what is your band. It means what agents you have what at the end, if you don't have academia in your ecosystem, you will not create talent, you will not create technology. If you have companies, you will not scale this. Or if you don't have investors, it means it's important for the director. When the concept of director is not just one person, it could be an organization and a, 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 a platform that is understanding the role of the agents, agents and actions. Do we have enough investors? Who is going to promote that investors appear? Is just a government. Is it means that the idea of this is important. We need this orchestration. I agree that this is not a, a traditional conductor of top-down decision, but we need in the ecosystem the sense of the ecosystem, uh, and we need to know who is doing what. Map. We need to orchestrate in a co-creation what vision we want to achieve. This is something that we have to agree. If not, everybody it will play whatever they want. As you say, we have to listen to each other. We have to watch each other. We have to connect each other. But we have to have a common platform for interacting between us. That's the reason why I agree about the jazz, for sure. Jazz is the model. But 
chess is a lot. Every talent, every person that is playing chess, they are masters. They are masters in guitar, in double bass, because they have to be everyone in their field very good. But they have to listen and they have to connect to others to be sure that they are co-creating something special together. That's perhaps the challenge that we have in ecosystems. Do we know who is each other? Do we map really what we have in, in our activities, in our, and on our assets? But with that, do we have a common purpose? And common purpose is to be sure. For instance, now in Rio Grande, they are going to develop a common purpose. They want to be a reference in blue economy. This is an incredible <laughs> commitment of all the Asians of a, a small town in Brazil that they want to be. That's a more important thing because the port, the universities, the government, they work in a, let me say, little town. This is not Sao Paulo. It's Rio Grande, very low, low, low down uh, in Rio Grande do Sul. And they achieve the common purpose and now they are working to achieve this common purpose. Sometimes innovation is not just for big cities. Innovation could be for local innovation ecosystems that perhaps are not big, big uh, uh, cities, but they want to be and they need to orchestrate. That's my, my reaction, Chico, about your jazz. That's good. This is not just about big band. Also, it could be a small band, but adequate band that they deliver what they have uh, like a proportion. Thank you. I have some questions, but I'd like to listen, Karina, on this subject. Karina, is this a, okay, is this jazz or, or orchestra to deal with the novice ecosystems? Uh, I, I, I have to say, we are going to make the decision. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have to say that I love the metaphor of the jazz band. Uh, I feel that, in a way, uh, uh, we are in the middle because. Uh, we also talk about the triple helix and the quadruple helix. Each of the Asians have a role, let's say. Uh, the government with the rules, uh, the academy with the research and the innovation, also the industry applying, each of us uh, have a role. And I, I wouldn't say that uh, it must to be all bottom up, as you said, mentioned before, and to achieve cooperation and engagement you have to allow a uh, co-creation. I feel yeah. that the words that Chico used yeah. before, he mentioned co-creation, collaboration, and cooperation. I feel that engagement is achieved when you allow people to co-create. So in a way, SHAS, I feel it's a good metaphor for this kind of ecosystem. But anyway, uh, I feel that each of us uh, can contribute according with the position and the resources we have. So in a way, I feel that we are in the middle, in the middle because uh, the governance, the governance is also a really, really important um, factor for the ecosystem of innovation because if we don't organize each other, uh, maybe we are moving in different direction. And if we set a direction and all of us move uh, through the same direction, we are going to um, get there, our uh, objective, faster and stronger. That's why I feel it's in the middle. It's in the middle. Each of us can co-create and can uh, present ideas, yes, for sure. But in a moment, we need uh, to organize each other and to set a direction. Uh, that's why I love the metaphor. I feel it's really uh, interesting to talk about it. Uh, and from my stand, I feel that we need uh, to a, a balance between uh, all the, the visions. Very good. I have the uh, three questions, two questions here. Uh, one is about uh, how the society can uh, see technology as an opportunity to improve it, uh, uh, the, the life of people and not a threat for the societies. Another, uh, okay, we know this about you. Uh, we, what is orchest innovation, orchestration of innovation ecosystem? I think we're already talking about that. 
So the I think the questions about uh, technology as an opportunity or threat has to do with this chat GPT polemic uh, and all this discussion we had in the last months, including some of the founders of generative uh, artificial intelligence proposing to stop the research or the stopping the research, and then. Uh, and, and before, uh, while we, we develop the regulation of this initiative. So I think the regulation is also an uh, uh, in, in important issue on the orchestration of innovation ecosystems. And how do you say that? Uh, Karina, do you want to, to start? And then we are going to see the, there is another question appearing here. Sorry, could you remind me the question specifically? No, the question is there uh, about the the threat. If the threat is a, a uh, opportunity, or if the technology is an opportunity or a threat for the society, and the and the example is the Chat GPT polemic we are facing. How do you see that? Okay, uh, I, I have to admit that. <laughs> I am uh, also a teacher uh, here in the university and uh, in this particular example that you made to talk about technology, uh, I have my, uh, a very deep thought about it. I feel that uh, all kinds of technologies, this particular and all the other are tools. And the question is not, maybe not the tool, but how we use the tool. Uh, and in a way, um, Particularly with, with uh, particularly with ChatGPT, I feel that uh, for students that are uh, starting to develop their their created uh, way of thinking and start to uh, try to solve some challenges, we have to uh, think really uh, in deep how we implement this kind of technologies in our uh, rooms. For instance, in my particular case. Uh, <laughs> I have to admit that uh, at the very beginning with chat uh, GPT uh, arise, I asked my student to answer the test with pencil, not with the computer. My first, my first decision at the very, very beginning was that because I, I need to be sure that they were thinking about the question and they were not questions just about the theory. I present them a case and ask them to solve the case, but ChatGPT can already do that. So uh, in, at the beginning, I did that. And, but in time, I, I tried to think how to use the technology in the best way. Uh, and now I, I am proposing them, them something else. So uh, sorry, I, I use this example because it's really, really close. And I, I feel it's uh, a good example to uh, talk about the technology and how it can improve or not uh, some situation. Uh, I feel that in this particular case, we have to think uh, the purpose. Always, always, we have to think about the purpose. And all the decisions we made, considering the purpose, uh, are going to be better than if we forget why we do things. Why we want ChatGPT? We want it to be more productive in our work? Okay. If we are already professional, we already know what to do, we can perform really, really interesting questions to ChatGPT and ChatGPT will speed up the process of something that we, in a way, already know. But if we are talking about students that are, that are starting to learn how to think and how to solve problems, I, I feel that we need to rethink the way we use the technology. Uh, but as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, it's, it is not the tool. Technology is a tool for us. Uh, it's the way we use it in the different situations. Uh, that's my uh, opinion about uh, this particular example. Thank you. Uh, uh, Shiko and then Piquet, and we have two, two new questions as well. There is a red in the chat, if you can give a look in that. Yeah. After after Chico, uh, Chico, you want to give a look in, and try to answer all together? Give a look in the two questions. One is acad academia can nurture an environment uh, 
where students can bring their learnership to their communities. In reality, the question is the ecosystem environment lack of innovative integration in terms of involving communities. How do the academia can nurture an environment where students can bring their learnership to their communities? And the other is directed to Professor Piquet, but I think the others can be how to bring different jazz bands together with so many different stakeholders and expectations. Wow, oh, good. Uh, well, see, I will respond to the first question. Claro, a segunda foi endereçada a Piquet diretamente, mas primeiro fazer um comentário sobre a fala de Karina é, e o ponto anterior. A tecnologia sempre, sempre, sempre será uma oportunidade carregada de ameaças. É da natureza de toda e qualquer inovação, mas aí extrapola o, o terreno, extrapola o território da tecnologia em si, da ciência, da inovação. Isso vai, vai para a esfera da política. Por isso que devemos sempre estar atentos à qualidade da política e dos políticos, porque o uso que se faz da, da tecnologia é uma decisão que não tem a ver com, com a ciência em si é, e tem a ver com decisões políticas. É, política no sentido é, largo, sem nenhum prejuízo aqui, sem nenhum preconceito. Ah, a questão ah, de como a academia pode alimentar ah, um, um, um ambiente, um ecossistema onde os estudantes possam trazer seus aprendizados e, e suas comunidades. É, eu acho que a gente tem que enfrentar sempre o desafio de pôr de pé a tríplice hélice ou a quádrupla hélice. Quando a gente isola um fator especificamente, a gente estará sempre correndo o risco de estabelecer uma, re uma relação antagônica com os demais potenciais parceiros. A universidade tem um papel fundamental na formação do capital humano, na formação do talento, tem um papel fundamental na pesquisa, na criação do conhecimento fundamental, na criação do conhecimento uh, aplicado, mas a universidade tem suas limitações e tem o seu propósito, assim como tem as empresas, seu propósito, seus propósitos e suas limitações, assim como tem os governos. É exatamente da convergência do que há de melhor nessas três componentes que a gente fará um ecossistema mais robusto. As universidades é, podem... Eu sou professor da Universidade de Pernambuco há 38 anos. Não se sabe bem disso. É, eu posso dizer com, com muita clareza que, que um, o primeiro, a primeira contribuição que, que a academia pode dar é descer do pedestal. É a academia enxergar a sociedade estabelecer interações cada vez mais frequentes com a sociedade. Com sociedade, aqui nós estamos falando de agentes públicos, nós estamos falando de agentes privados, nós estamos falando, obviamente, de, da própria sociedade como um todo, das organizações sociais e outras tantas que representam, de uma forma ou de outra, de maneira não institucionalizada, o desejo da sociedade. Eu acho muito interessante porque não dá para você andar é, sem a universidade, não dá para avançar sem a universidade, mas também você não avança tanto quando, quanto poderia e deveria, dados os desafios de uma nação, se você foca é, a uma estratégia centrada na universidade. A universidade deve ter a sua estratégia, mas um ecossistema de inovação implica em que a universidade é parte da estratégia assim como as empresas são parte da estratégia, assim como governos e a sociedade são parte da estratégia. É, e posso também falar, Moacir, de dessa experiência é, longa no Porto Digital, é, em que a gente tem, tem o desafio de mediar, de equilibrar as expectativas e as estratégias de cada agente é, que faz parte do ecossistema. 
a universidade sendo um desses polos, as empresas e o governo, etc. Então, fazer essa mediação, essa concertação, essa orquestração, uma orquestração baseada na cocriação, baseada na confiança, baseada é, na grandeza dos propósitos, é sim um grande, é um grande desafio. Piquet, tem uma pergunta para, para, para o Teia, agora. Bem, pois pues agora intento responder. Uma por uma, I don't know, in English, castellano, catalan, perhaps I can speak catalan now, just for enriching mm -hmm. our meeting. Catalan uh, is more complicated for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, the idea, first, let me uh, answer one by one. The first one was about ecosystem and, and communities. Uh, if we agree that innovation starts when we have challenges, and challenges, we have challenges when we have a purpose, we can have social purpose. For instance, food, uh, uh, all about uh, water, energy, or whatever we have as a social challenges. The important thing on that is that if we put these challenges on as a starting point of innovation, we can add and we can involve uh, students and researchers to solve that. For instance, we at La Salle in Barcelona, we have all the students for the first year, all the students, they do what we, we say social entrepreneurship. We put on the table of them challenges in the society that they have to solve. Third, first, they have to understand what is the problem. They have to discover what is the problem. Discover, it means understand the nature of this challenge. And after that, they have to solve that. It means that you don't have to be a PhD student to do things. You can be a student that you have commitment with your community and you try to solve challenges, whatever challenge you want to understand. Could be the United Nations challenges, the SDGs, or could be the neighborhood challenges. That's the important thing that you have to be university student. Also, you can be a secondary student to be with high commitment with your community. Second, about the jazz bands and different jazz bands. At the end of the day, you need teams, teams that are delivering things. And you can have a big band, but you can have people in the school training and educating entrepreneurship or doing different things. Our uh, purpose always is that we have teams that are delivering projects and you have a, the big band, but also you have small teams that are delivering projects that are solving the challenges. And the last question from Marcelo Maral, as you know, member of the X uh, conference uh, steering committee, and he will be with us next week in Barcelona, also as Moathir. Uh, the, the challenge of the uh, of ecosystem is how can we integrate, uh, that's the question of, of Marcelo, all these uh, elements, science parks, perhaps uh, other uh, districts of innovation or any other things. My understanding is you have urban dimension, you have, you have the hard factor, you have soft factors, and you have economy and society. Uh, it, uh, it could be areas of innovation, or could be districts of innovation, or could be different things. At the end of the day, are things, are actions that you are uh, transforming in the urban dimension, in the economical dimension, and in the social dimension. From my point of view, what makes sense is to create a governance, governance of activities, not only government of the assets. It's not about who is the prop, who is the property, uh, the who is the owner of the property. It's about it's not about the buildings, it's about what is happening inside the buildings. For that, my recommendation always is to create a governance <coughs> with all the systems that will help us to align the different activities that we do in the same ecosystem. And it could be a district of innovation, or it could be an innovation park, or could be an incubator. If we have a common purpose, we will see that every one action is with the same purpose. Yes, it with clear alignment of the agents for the achievement of these challenges. That's from my point of view, more, one of the more important things. For instance, in Porto Alegre, uh, we were de developing different projects. One of them is Cuarto Distrito. Another them, of them is uh, Cuarto Distrito, a district of innovation. It, this is a big project. You need uh, people working on that, but this is not only the project of Porto Alegre. Also, you will find another project that is um, uh, uh, Instituto Caldeira, 
this is more a project that is a private project that open for the society but also you have uh, the image of the city la marca poa uh, that what they were orchestrating all the designers the good thing is that you know 25 30 50 projects that you know that are happening in your city you understand what is my role in one project but they listen others that are doing other projects that's the conscience of the ecosystem that's the reason why we have a meeting every six months in Porto Alegre, where we have a summary and we review all how we were advancing all the projects. Sometimes we are missing. We believe that the government is doing everything. And the challenge here is governance, not government. And governance means not a mandate base of four years that I am the president of the, I am the mayor. The, the governance means that you have a triple, quadruple helix platform that is the memory of all the agents. If one agent is missing something, for instance, I remember when we had a change in the mayor of the city of Porto Alegre, uh, Marquesan was a wonderful uh, prefeito, a wonderful, uh, in that case, was supporting the, 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 uh, in the Pacto Alegre. M Melo, the new mayor, when we were knocking the door to, mayor, to, to the new mayor say, okay, we're working in this direction, uh, he couldn't stop the project because it was a memory of the triple X. A mellow that was very smart person say, oh, that's a good project. What I am doing, what I am going to do is to put double speed, double speed. I am not against, I will help more and more. That's a smart decision of the governance. That it means that we are not depending on one mayor or one president or one rector. We have the memory. If this is the idea of the triple quadruple is a governance where we balance different uh, ways of uh, doing and also different speeds of the agents. Thank you, thank you very much, Pique. <clears throat> Guys, uh, uh, we are uh, at the end of our panel. Unfortunately, the discussion is very insightful. I have a lot of questions, but I do that in. in I don't have to, the, the opportunity to meet me uh, to meet face to face. For those who, who came to the panel uh, at the at the middle or some or after the beginning, we did uh, an announcement that Professor Francisco Saboya was designed as the new president of EMBRAP, the Brazilian Enterprise for industry innovation. Congrats again, Professor Chico. Karina and Piquet, I have the pleasure to meet you, both of you, next week in Barcelona for the conference of Tipo Helix. And we are also presenting the proposition to bring the, the next conference in 2024 to Brazil. So hopefully we are going to have a good news anyway, whatever. But yeah. Of, of of course we we expect it's coming to Brazil, and uh, as we have just three minutes, one minute for each one. And ladies first, Karina, please final final comments. Okay, uh, I, I going to I would like to say some few words uh, to achieve engagement uh, in our experience. Um, we check that co-creation is the key element, and linking with one of the question how to um, show in different expectation i could say that communication and, and co-creation is key and regarding the question of marcelo amaral yes i in my opinion a uh, triple helix uh, or quadruple helix also including uh, civil society are a key agent to start to manage this ecosystem of innovation government, industry, academy, and civil society. I feel that uh, our key involve all the Asian co-create uh, to achieve uh, engagement. Thank you, Karina Piquet. Your turn. Final comments. Okay, in my case, my final comments is uh, orchestration means to be sure that we are part of a common project. And orchestration means that we need a permanent platform for listening together and for reviewing the vision, the, the challenges and the projects. 
uh, this is important because sometimes we have platforms that are political platforms. Let me say political because it depends on one mayor or one governor. We, as a mature society, we need to create this kind of platforms that are combining the best of the democracy because we have elections every four years, but we have elections every four years of rectors and we have elections of the, of the people. A lot of elections because we are in democracy, that's good. But we don't have to forget that we have a long-term vision. And this is not a mandate vision. This is be beyond four years, beyond eight years. That's the kind of place that we need commitments with all the quadruple helix as we did in 2012 in Barcelona, after 20 years, five mayors, different colors, nobody was stopping 2012. Why? Because 2012 was a good project with the commitment of all the Asians. That's the, the kind of things that we have to be sure. But, and the university plays a key role, is providing knowledge, but also providing all the data in order to make good decisions all together. Thank you, Piquet. And Chico Saboya, please. Okay, Moacir, é, acho que reforçando algo que já foi dito nas, por todos nós aqui, eu destacaria é, no, no, nessas falas finais a componente talento, talento e talento. O capital humano é o único que cria. Portanto, se a gente está falando de ecossistemas de inovação, nós temos que ter estratégias centradas em pessoas. O propósito, sim, é uma visão de longo prazo. A visão tem que estar associada a uma estratégia de desenvolvimento socioeconômico do lugar. Mas se a gente não centrar a estratégia de um ecossistema de inovação em pessoas, criando as condições todas de formação, atração e retenção desses que são os melhores talentos, sejam técnicos, sejam empreendedores, nós não vamos vencer, Moacir, aquele, o brain drain, aquela diáspora de cérebros que a gente vive, na, em especial nas regiões periféricas. O Brasil é um país exportador de talentos, tanto é que agora o próprio governo lança uma ideia de um programa novo de repatriação de talentos, olha o custo que isso nos dá, nos traz, quando a gente poderia, a um custo menor e perene, criar desde logo as condições para manter os talentos aqui. Então, se a gente pensar realmente em, em, em estruturação de ecossistemas e no êxito de ecossistemas é, de inovação, é, seja qual a configuração, o Marcelo Amaral traz aí algumas ideias, qual seja a configuração de um parque tecnológico, uma simples incubadora, de um distrito de inovação, isso não é relevante. No centro de tudo tem pessoas, pessoas que a gente tem que criar todas as condições para que, que elas queiram estar naquele lugar e que elas se sintam valorizadas, contempladas e queiram investir no seu próprio desenvolvimento e assim desenvolver o coletivo da forma mais colaborativa possível. Deixo essas últimas mensagens aqui. Agradeço o convite, Moacir, estando à sua disposição para as próximas discussões sobre esse tema. Thank you very much. It's unfortunately it's time to finish our panel. Thank you very much, Karina, Piquet, Chico Saboia. All the best. See you in Barcelona. Chico, I'm going to see you tomorrow in São Paulo. Eh? Ok. Ok. Chico, tomorrow. Karina and Piquet in Barcelona. Briefly. All the best for you. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for your Amazing walk. Panel. Amazing panel. Thank you very much. Acabe com as desculpas para não procurar o Sebrae. É empreendedor? Ligue, mande um zap. Vá ao Sebrae ou ele vai até você. Ah, e tem tudo no portal. Sebrae, a força do empreendedor brasileiro.